My presentation today wants to introduce you to an aspect of mosaic little no, but no less important. In fact, the first no form of the ancient mosaic is the one made with pebbles. In fact, before the use of the hand-cut tessera of marble and glass that will bring Hellenic and Roman mosaic at its best, the simplest element that man has found in nature to decorate the space were pebbles, easy findable on the beaches or in the rivers. And so they created this beautiful masterpiece that uh, I will now show you. These are only a small part. Show them or it will be long and complicated because the list really is endless. We could be here for hours as the topic is very broad and we have only half an hour. <laughs> the photos are divided into three sections. The mosaic of ancient Greece, the mosaic of Liguria, and finally you will see my work. Okay. This type of mosaic, after a period of centuries of which we have no evidence, is beginning to resurface in many places on the coast of the Mediterranean. Greece, Cyprus, Turkey, Italy, Spain, and Middle East. These are the places where nowadays you can still admire the pebble mosaic with many centuries of life. But most of them are to be found in Liguria, the region where I live. In the northwest of Italy is a small area of just uh, 5,410 square kilometers. And uh, it is a unique case in Italy and the Mediterranean because surely today Liguria is the Italian region with the highest number of pebble mosaics. There are hundreds of them, although an official census has never been made. Mostly are to be found in churchyard, but also there are many in private villas and square. Okay, now I show you. Oh, this is, is from Gordion. Gordion is in the Middle East, the modern Turkey. This is the, the most ancient. Oh, this is a um, water ink. It's not a mosaic. The original mosaic is this. This is the most ancient. It's dated the um, eighth century before Christ. And is the, the place is Gordion. After we have this, this is uh, in uh, modern Iraq. And this is particular because we have no a lot of pebble but we have the mortar red. It's like a opus signinum. I hope that you know. This is from Athene. Another one. Sorry, it's impossible for me to comment all, but uh, I think you enjoy the image. We 
because my English is so and so. <laughs> well, this is the highest peak of the pebble mosaic. This comes from Pella. Pella is the, the capital of uh, ancient uh, Macedonia, near Greece. And this was founded in the house of uh, Alexander. And, uh, and this image on the left is Alexander the Great and uh, her friends uh, Ephestione and uh, hunting lion. This is made with uh, little people. How think, uh, I think that is about uh, three meter, three meter wide for one meter and a half uh, highest. This is also from Pella. Another from Pella. This kind of mosaic is pretty like a, a painting. It's not a pebble mosaic, traditional uh, black and white, because we have uh, some color. We have an insert of lead inside to define the, the muscle and some details of the face. Here another one from Pella. The details. Bad photo. Another details. Okay. The mosaic of ancient Greece is uh, is finished. Now I talk again. Uh, the first sign of this particular stone set, no, sorry, <laughs> I forget. I'm going to introduce and to talk about the tradition in outdoor floors called the Risse, that in the spoken dialect of Genoa and Liguria means pebble mosaic. The first sign of this particular stone setting art in Liguria could be dated between the 14th and 15th centuries. This is the historic period when this art started to spread and develop in the region. Obviously, obviously a merchant city like Genoa, through the centuries, was subjected to various influences, and most probably this art started back during the Hellenic and Roman times, later followed by other Mediterranean cultures. It is important to mention the valuable peculiarity in this matter, the geological configuration of Liguria, because its rough and hilly landscape offers an incredible source for several kinds of stone. The river's banks and the sea beaches provide a huge quantity of pebbles. This is the reason why there is such a great variety of this stonework. At the beginning, of the research history, the pebble mosaics were used only as a form of a religious artwork to decorate churchyards. We have to understand <coughs> that this artwork carried a very strong symbolic messages, dense of metaphysical and metaphorical meanings. Furthermore, we can assume that the sites where the research was laid were places of passage, a spiritual catalyst for the human conscience. In other words, a bridge between the material and the ethereal world. And I will show you some. As above mentioned, the Hellenic Roman stone culture was a very important style. But it is at the beginning of the 16th century that we can find a precise Ligurian style of setting, layered as a baroque carpet with the addition of Hispanic and Morax influence. The birth of this original art was fed by diverse cultural and ethnical influences, an art that included in its graphical 
components, several elements generated by the Mediterranean Earth Basin, such as strict geometrical patterns, animals, and marine monstrous figures, symbolical, symbolical representation, and so on. Whilst in only few cases they include the human figure. The use of the black and white pattern developed into a more polychromatic use of pebble, adding gray, green, and red stone, depending on the zone in which the materials were more avail available. Since the Renaissance, the nobles from Genoa started to include in their architectural flavors this trendy style. To decorate their luxury mansion, they employed talented architects who filled their properties with faked caves called grotesque, in films, water plays, and fountains, starting the Italian style garden fashion, employing the use of pebbles mosaics, incorporating also other dimensional materials such as shaped ceramic tiles, shells, glass, and gold tessera. In the last two centuries, this technique was also liked by the general public. The research had finally found its popular soul. In fact, you can, you can also find it in a little square and city corners, in gardens and long sea promenades, close to the beaches that provide the main material, the pebbles. It is inset in the Ligurian urban architectural texture where it maintains its artistic domain. The sad note is that this artistic heritage, part of the valuable Ligurian material culture, is risking to fade away due to the institutional lack of sensibility and money funds to be assigned to restoration and maintenance. I'd like to stress the importance to support and nurture this art, for instance, by creating study groups and workshops in order to sensitize professional figures as well as uh, normal people, but most of all, to preserve this beautiful handicraft that travels through the centuries. Well, the part of uh, Mosaic of Liguria is finished. Now I'll show you the image. Well, this is a, a, a church, a churchyard. We can see the date and the animals inside. This is the oak. Uh, a putto, I don't know the name in, in English. This is the details. This is another one. I think this is the, um, the most ancient in Liguria. It is uh, from um, 1572. This is another one, a smaller one, 1744. This is another one, the details. It's a slide, the image talk for me. This is strange because this have the, the background with the redstone. Normally it's black or reverse white, but this is the, the unique with the background red.
Well, we can see the human figure, but uh, only in a few cases. Well, uh, this is my work. This is a, a monstrous figure, animal, sea creatures. This is a dolphin, a dragon. Another dolphin.
Oh, no. This photo is very... <laughs> it's impossible to see. I don't know why. Well, now I want to show you another side of my work, that is the restoration. This is one <laughs> you, you cannot see. Of the most beautiful churchyards in a pebble mosaic in uh, East Liguria. Um, the church was built in the late 16th century, but the research uh, dates to date back to 1891. The graphic of this artwork is based on three colors: black, white, and red. Sorry for this. It presents a geometrical pattern, but um, inside contains uh, several floral elements. In each of three sections, we have uh, that, and also in the border, we have uh, six leaves, flower pattern. Well, this summer in June, we were instructed by the community's church of Chiavari to restore this artwork. The evidence is that there were serious problems. Several gaps of every size and shape um, missing pebbles, one, two, three, uh, two larger uh, lacuna over one square meters wide. Uh, weeds with a lot of roots uh, below the mosaic and moss, lichens, and a lot of dirt. Now I show you. It was filled with sand, soil, and much more. A restoration poorly made. They used white artificial pebbles of a white marble, Carrara, that is made from, from chips, tumbled and rounded in industrial mechanical process, but not good for, mosa for mosaics. You, ca you cannot see <laughs> the contrast. But the main problem was the inadequate drainage during rainfall. Um, in the front, here, here in the front, we have a wall bank, a wall bank that contains the mosaic. It is closed all around, and the only exit for water is the gate in the middle, here. And also here, a rainfall, a rainfall from the roof that caused the big gap uh, here now is uh, resolved and they have installed a gutter. It was a very bad condition. Now, the first you can see the moss and uh, this was the situation until three months ago. You can see the gaps. the dirt. <laughs> okay. This is the removal sample that we did before the, the real restoration. Here we have uh, already cleaned the mosaic and the gap is ready to be filled with uh, integrative pebbles. Well, the cleaning was very hard. We have used a vacuum cleaner to vacuum the dirt. And pebble by pebble, we have removed one by one the weeds. We have tried to remove also the roots, but sometimes it was impossible. And then we have excavated the lacuna to prepare the filling. Well, one day while we were, we were cleaning a big gap for imminent integration, 
something strange started to appear. Something was hidden. It wasn't simply the statuman preparation that notoriously was used for the realization of this kind of mosaics. It was something different. By, by observing the disposition of the stones, we have supposed that is a previous pavement. Nowadays, we don't know the date. The disposition of the stone leaves a few doubts. It is a layered stone pavement formed by an oblique disposed grid in respect to the east-west axis that is almost entirely composed by elongated red stone here and here. Um, by elongated redstone called the aspro. The, result, the, the resulting square is about 40, 45 centimeter wide. Inside, they filled, they filled, mm, with big colored pebbles, sorry, black, gray, yellow, and white. Here, and you can see well here. Was a previous pavement. Well, here you can see the big pebble. Look at the surface, how it is consumed. Well, this is a graphic relief that I made. And this is a possible uh, rendering. Okay. Here we have an, an image of pebbles. We were lucky because the, the people of the village during the years have picked the free pebbles and gated in the back of church. We have uh, used them to restore with a little uh, integration picked up from the beach because the original material is important in this kind of work. Um, through the years, the people get a, a patina, a film that only time can give. Here, the first reconstruction of a big lacuna. Here another smaller one. And here the step with the mortar smoothed and stamped with the draw. Again. Well, here we have some details of other parts cleaned and restored. Here in the entrance, we had a big problem with the slope for the, for the water by the wrong restoration that someone did. Also, the draw was wrong. We know from a document of the church that here there was the date of a mosaic that was 1891. Well, we have asked. Um, the people of the village, if someone have an old photo of a marriage or something like this, where it will be possible to recognize the zone of the date. And one day a woman come bringing wind with her this one. <laughs> we can see it's possible to, 
recognize the, the number one here on the, on the left. And here, there is the nine. At this point, we had the, the elements for the reconstruction. The permission was accorded from the Office for Artistical Heritage, and we made it. Now the mosaic is truly complete. Here, another details. And now we focus on the latest, on the last picture of the entire work, of the entire finished work. Well, this is the work finished. We have worked on it in two person for about 400 hours. The entire dimension is about 100 square meter. Um, the poor suite was much, <laughs> was very warm the weather. But the, re the result is a, is a big satisfaction. Well, now I show you a video of making off of an, another work.
I hope that you have enjoyed. And thank you very much for your attention.